I am on my way out to run a few errands and I wanted to share with you my outfit of the day. Now this is a Berta sweater that I made recently and it's so easy to make. I purchased the fabric from Joanne Fabrics and it is this Sherpa and I love the color this like taupe kind of color and I paired it with these jeans that I purchased when I was out thrift shopping and I love them because they're not skinny jeans and they have a little room at the leg area so I like that and oh for this pattern there were supposed to be some ties around the sleeve and I decided to omit the ties but other than that I didn't make any other changes besides I did shorten the sleeve because burn up patterns run a little long in the sleeve area on me but besides shortening the sleeve and leaving off those straps everything was just easy peasy and I love it and I am on my way out the door. spent the weekend with us and he actually forgot some of his clothes so that's why I had to stop here at the post office to mail his garments to him and now I'm going to my next stop in Ross to pick up some luggage we let someone use our luggage and at this point we're just gonna go ahead and let them have it so we have a couple of trips coming up and for some of them we're gonna be staying for maybe a week or a little over a week so we figured we needed a bigger luggage than just our carry-on bags so that's why I needed to get a new luggage so now I'm on my way to go home and let me turn the radio down go home and I'm gonna share with you my next one make which is a jumpsuit McCall's 8314 is the pattern that I want to work on next I was looking at the difference between the views and I noticed that view C has cutouts at the shoulder and then it also has elastic that goes at the bottom of the pants leg. I've decided that I want to make view B. It doesn't have any cutouts at the shoulder and it also does not have any elastic on the bottom of the legs. I did notice that the fabric is laid out a little differently. Okay so let's say that this is our fabric. Typically what you would do is take your fabric and you would fold it in half and then you would place your pattern pieces within this area here or on the fold. In this case, the pieces number one and two are pretty wide. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your fabric and fold it in half this way. And then you'll place your pattern pieces within this area here. The pattern calls for crepes, stable knits, shali, and gauze, and I'm going to use this 100% polyester fabric that I purchased from Joanne Fabrics. 
I plan to make a couple of changes to the pattern. The first change is to lengthen it by an inch. The front and back pieces have these lines here and you would take these lines and make buttonholes and these buttonholes will be where the sash will go through. I've decided that I don't want a sash in my jumpsuit so I will not be putting these buttonholes in my garment. I've decided to add some pockets to this jumpsuit. So I just grab a pocket pattern piece from a different pattern and I'm gonna go ahead and cut four of these out and then I will add these to the jumpsuit. So I have my front piece here and I'm trying to figure out where I want my pocket to be placed. And let me see, okay, so if this is at the shoulder, something like this. Here's the side, and there's a notch right here, which actually may be a good place for the pocket. Okay, so here are the front and back pieces of the jumpsuit, and then they have these notches on the side which match up to each other. What I think I'm gonna do is take the pocket piece, and I'm not gonna match the notches together, but I think I'm gonna take the pocket piece and just place it right at the top of the notch and then that will be how I sew the pockets on. So I have the pocket pinned to the front and it's at the notch. And then I'm gonna go ahead and stitch it on and I'm gonna use a smaller seam instead of 5 eighths. I'm either gonna do a quarter inch or 3 eighths of an inch, I haven't decided yet. So I ended up sewing the pockets in with a 3 eighths of an inch seam. And now I'm going to work on this inner leg edge here and I'm going to pin this together and sew it all the way down to the end of the pants leg. Okay, so now the next step is to sew the center crotch seam and this is the back of the jumpsuit so I'm going to sew the two backs together and sew from here all the way down and then there is a dot over here on this side and that's where I will stop. I am going to be working on the extension next and I decided to just serge around all of the edges just to make them nice and neat. And then you take the extension and you fold it in half with right sides together. And then you're going to stitch each end this way, that way, and then this way. And then you'll turn the extension over, you know, turn it to the right side and then baste the raw edges. So I have the extension pin to the left front of the jumpsuit and then now I'm going to go ahead and stitch from the top here all the way down to the end. I've just stitched the shoulder area on each side so here and over here and then I serge the edges and press the seams open. Next I'm going to sew up the side seams. There is a dot here and I'm going to stitch from this dot down and around to close up the pocket. Then I'm gonna come up here and then stitch all the way down to the end of the pant leg. Right now what I'm doing is attaching the facing to the front of the jumpsuit. And by the way, I did try the jumpsuit on and I do feel like the pockets are maybe about an inch or so lower than I would like for them to be. So if I ever make this again, I will definitely raise the pockets up just a little bit. Okay, I completed the facing and I have it attached to the front. So now the front is complete and now all I need to do is put hook and eyes according to the directions. But I've decided that I'm just going to go ahead and add some snaps here. And then after that I will just need to hem the garment and then I'll be all done. So I made an apple pie the other day and I have a love share for you. Scatter some rolled oats over the bottom of your crust before filling it. It will soak up some of the excess juices and help the crust from getting soggy.